Hey, Buckeye Scoopers, Alex Gleitman here. First edition of Around the Oval. We got a special guest with us today, Ohio State 2021 quarterback commit, Kyle McCord. Kyle, thanks for joining us today. How's everything doing with uh, you and your family during uh, this whole quarantine period? I'm good. I mean, everybody in my family is doing well. I mean, my mom's happy that, you know, we're all together. Um, so no complaints over here. Yeah, definitely unique time, but I think silver lining a lot of people maybe don't realize is, uh, you know, as a teenager, I'm sure you maybe don't feel the same as, as I do with the young son and everything, but family time, a little extra family time isn't, isn't necessarily a bad thing here, although I can understand if I was, you know, 17 years old, 16 years old, how I'd feel uh, being trapped in the house with my parents. Yeah, no so uh, definitely sympathizing with you, but you know, I, it's, it's a unique time. Obviously things are not open and, you're not going through the same steps that you normally would um, if there was no uh, ban on, on activity and, and things were open and things like that. So I just want you to tell us a little bit, what have you been doing during this time to make sure you stay in shape, uh, get ready for the season, and then obviously continue to improve your skills so that you could be ready when you get to Ohio State? Yeah, I mean, so the biggest thing, uh, honestly, is I just have so much more time on my hands now that I'm not sitting in a classroom for seven, eight hours a day. And, you know, school is over now with the online class. So I have all day to work out. So I'm doing multiple workouts a day, really just trying to get better. I'm probably throwing three times a week um, with a few of my guys um, and then lifting pretty much every day and then doing different things for speed and agility, whether it's sand work, um, you know, jumping rope, running, you know, miles um, and, and timing them and trying to get my times down or, you know, I'll go up to the field and just do, you know, agility um drills so just trying to get creative and and really work in any way I can um but it's definitely been a fun challenge to um try to take on yeah and I know you told me today you had some two a days started early in the morning working out with receivers and then did some weight stuff later on uh I know Marvin was Marvin Harrison Jr. for those watching uh another Ohio State 2020 commit was one of those guys tell mm -hmm. us a little bit how's how's he looking right now He's looking great. I mean, he's he's college ready right now. So I mean, both got one more year uh, together at St. Joe's. So I'm I'm extremely excited for upcoming year and then the years to come at uh, at Ohio State. Awesome. And just one more thing about Marvin while we while we're talking about him. What what do you think makes him so good? Like, what are the things that you rely on from him as a quarterback? And and what do you think is going to translate well uh, to the next level? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, he's, you know, built like an NFL receiver already, 6'4", uh, about 200 pounds uh, right now. And, you know, he can do everything. He can run every single route in the in the route tree and, um, you know, can go up and, and catch every single ball. You just have to put it in his radius. But the one thing that I said that I think separates Marvin um, from, you know, the average high school receiver is just his knowledge of the game. You know, when I'm talking to him about what I'm seeing out there, he talks to me like he's a quarterback. You know, he understands the game and what I'm seeing. And I think that makes it so much easier for me um, to kind of relay my message across. And, you know, he knows exactly where I want him to be just based on, you know, how the defense is playing. So his his mind for the game, I think, is, is second to none. I think that's one thing that's really separated him from, you know, the rest of uh, the competition. Yeah, and both of you guys, as I said, committed to Ohio State. You were now, I guess, it's a little over a year ago at this point. It's crazy. It feels like forever, but it's also uh, doesn't feel that long either. Um, and then Marvin, obviously, was a little bit later in the year last year, closer to the, the fall. Um, but you guys are two of 19 guys now in this 2021 recruiting class, first class 21. That's ranked first in the country. Uh, an incredible group. What has it been like for you to see – um, I mean, this is, I remember when you committed, you told me that you wanted to put to get help put together the number one recruiting class in the country. And while there's still a way to go till December signing period of February, National Signing Day, I think it's going to be really hard for any team to top you guys. What has it been like for you to see this class come together the way it has so far? Yeah, I mean, I think it just started out um, with Jack committing so early last uh, February, I think, and then me following him um, in April. And I think, you know, having two um, you know, big time guys um, commit on both sides of the ball. I think that's huge. And, you know, when I committed, um, you know, we kind of treated it like a conversation, you know, whoever could get more commits on their side of the ball. So, I mean, we, we both recruited, you know, extremely hard. 
um, throughout the summer. We picked up a few early guys, and I think that the snowball effect is, is real with this recruiting, or recruiting class. Um, you know, just to say, you know, the effect that I think, you know, one commit has on another. And as soon as, you know, that one recruit commits, he's, you know, going after another kid. And, you know, I think it's really been special to see kind of this class grow and, you know, blow up, you know, these last few months and really separate us from the rest of, you know, the college football world. So, you know, it's definitely been fun. And, you know, we still have a few more guys we got to go after. So we're not done yet. But, you know, it's definitely been crazy just to see, you know, how this last year has unfolded with, uh, with you know, commits to Ohio State. Yeah, we'll ask you about some of those guys you're going after in just a minute. But you kind of touched on this when you were speaking before about uh, when you committed, just kind of being a leader and going out and helping get other guys. How important was it for you, both as a person and as the quarterback in this class, to, uh, you know, just kind of take on that role, that leadership role, uh, and, and kind of be a guy accountable for helping to make the team around you better? Yeah, that was one of Coach Day's main visions. And talking to him about this time last year, a little um, more than a year, um, you know, that was one of his visions was for me to commit early and then help build this class. And, um, you know, I think that's huge. Anytime you get a quarterback commit early, um, you know, it, it's huge in recruiting because, you know, Coaches can recruit, you know, anyone they want, but it, it's a lot different when, you know, a player's recruiting you to a school. So um, I've just kind of tried to use that to my advantage and leverage guys and um, sway them to Ohio State, you know, just saying, you know, we could play together, you know, and that's something that, you know, the coaches can't say, only the players can. And so I think, you know, when um, a quarterback and, you know, in Jack's case, like a defensive end, you know, is saying we could play together and, you know, run the college football world. I think that's, you know, one of the best recruiting um, recruiting tools to use. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I guess your relationship with the other guys in this class, it started like that. It's obviously grown. How are you guys keeping in touch right now? Is there a group, you know, everyone always talks about like the infamous group text and things like that. Like, what is what is that looking like as far as your relationship with the other guys in this class that they've now that they've already committed? Yeah, I mean, we all talk. You know, I've talked to um, Sam Hart, obviously Marvin, Evan Pryor, um, Jack, Ben Christman. Like, we all talk almost every single day. You know, and I think that's one thing that has been huge for us is just the communication between the commits and you know, kind of coordinating what. Kyle, I lost your audio for a second. Can you hear me? Yes, now I can. Oh, yeah, just cut out for a second. No worries. Yeah, so I was just saying we talk every day, and I think that's just been huge um, with the communication between us and – um, kind of coordinating what guys we're going after, um, who's going to commit next. And, um, you know, I think that's one thing that, that separates this class and makes us you know, so special is just, you know, we're obviously um, great football players. I think we have 18 or 19 guys and, you know, each one is a top caliber player. But I think off the field too, you know, we're just top caliber guys. And I think we're molding together really well. Um, so I think that's huge for this class. And I think just the communication, um, you know, in this dead period, obviously none of us can visit, but I think, you know, we haven't really missed a beat in, in that area. Uh, that's definitely pretty special, and it seems like it's a special group. Again, there's 19 of you guys. Probably means there's six, seven, maybe eight spots left. Um, tell us, who are some of the guys you're going after to fill those limited remaining spots? Yeah, for sure. I mean, offensively uh, speaking, guys, I'm going after Emeka Buka from Washington, Troy Stilato from Florida. Those are really the two main guys at receiver. Um, Hudson Wolf from Tennessee, big tight end that, you know, we'd love to have. And then, you know, a few linemen um, that, you know, we're still going after. J.C. Lantham uh, from IMG, um, Jagger Burton, and then a few other guys. So, I mean, it's it's, you know, crazy just how selective they're being. But, you know, I think that we have great leverage right now. And, you know, when you're dominating recruiting, I think that gives you, you know, the option to be so selective. So they're really handpicking the guys and, you know, going after them 110%. Definitely. And, you know, I'm going to put you on the spot here. If you had to predict, I don't want you to give away too much of what you may know, but if you had to predict who's going to be the next guy to commit to, to this class. The next guy, um, 
I mean, the guy right now that um, me and Sam Hart are probably working on the hardest, um, I'd say uh, Hudson Wolf. That's really who we're trying to get the most um, right now, at least for me and Sam. Um, you know, we, we've uh, started a great relationship with him. So, you know, I don't, you know. I'm... Lost your audio again. Love technology during the quarantine. Can't hear you yet. Can you hear me? Yep, you're back. <laughs> but no, uh, no, like I was saying, um, you know, I'd say uh, Hudson, I'd say, is probably the one that, you know, I could see committing. Um, but at the same time, you know, I have no idea when he's going to commit. And I'm not, you know, one to try to pressure a guy into committing early before he feels comfortable. Um, you know, whenever he, he feels is right, that's when, you know, I'd love him to commit. But, you know, I think everybody's going through the process, especially, you know, with the, the conditions that COVID has um, produced for, you know, the recruiting world. I think everybody's kind of taking it at a, at a different stride. So, um, you know, it's interesting. You know, some guys, I think, want to wait to, to visit until they commit anywhere. But other guys, you know, know where they want to go and then, you know, pull the trigger. So. Definitely. Well, it will definitely be interesting to see uh, who is next. I know Hudson's a guy Ohio State really wants. Uh, I know you guys have been on him pretty hard. I know he's high on the Buckeyes, but a lot of good options for him. So we'll see how things play out. Uh, I know uh, it's also going to be interesting now with the NCAA's decision to extend the dead period. I don't know if you saw till July through July 31st now. Yep. So I don't see visits happening till September. It's It's going to be it sucks for, for the guys like Hudson who wanted to make another round before making that decision. But, um, you know, as you said, a lot of these guys, if they want to commit before their senior seasons, uh, they may have to kind of make a call and then uh, go from there. But last thing we wanted to touch on uh, was kind of what, with the, with the current Ohio State staff, what have they been telling you guys during this whole time? How have they been staying in touch with you? Um, and what has been their message to you uh, throughout this whole period? Yeah, I mean, they're just trying to tell us to stay positive and stay active and, you know, continue to find ways to get better. Um, I think everybody's kind of um, going through it differently, uh, depending on where they are in the country. Um, but, you know, obviously all of us were really looking forward to the official visit um, that was supposed to happen and um, a little less than a month from now, the, the June official visit that obviously is not going to happen now, but um, you know, they're just trying to tell, uh, tell us to stay positive. You know, we're doing some Zoom calls as a class with the coaching staff um, and, and talking and, you know, just trying to make the best out of the situations. But, you know, I've been, you know, in constant contact with uh, Coach Corey, Coach Day, Coach Wilson, you know. So um, as far as communication goes, you know, I really haven't, you know, missed, uh, missed a beat anywhere with any of the coaches. And, you know, I think that the same is uh, that's the same for a lot of the guys. Um, but, you know, it sucks that, you know, we can't be on campus, but, you know, just trying to make the best out of, you know, the situations. Yeah, I, I do want to, to touch uh, one more thing. Uh, you mentioned Coach Corey Dennis, uh, new quarterback's coach. Uh, obviously, when you committed, it was Coach Juricic in charge uh, of, of what will be your future room. Obviously, Coach Day has a big hand in the quarterback. Mm -hmm. um, position and the offense at Ohio State, but what is your relationship like with Corey Dennis, and uh, what are you looking forward to as far as being able to play for him? Yeah, so I mean, uh, I met Coach Dennis last uh, February, so February of 2019, so I guess last, last February, um, but he's, you know, a great guy first and foremost. I mean, that was my first impression was just, you know, how cool of a guy and down to earth he is, um, and then um, you know, he, he works harder than anybody I've ever met. You know, he's always on go, always trying to find ways to get better. And, you know, I think a lot of people were, you know, skeptical when uh, Coach Urisic left, who was going to be the new, new quarterback coach. And, you know, they were trying to figure it out. But, you know, as soon as I found out the news, I was hoping it was Coach Dennis because I already had such a great relationship with him. And, um, you know, he's done a great job, you know, in my recruitment. He was one of the main reasons that, I committed just my relationship with him. Um, and then on top of that, you know, I think when he did get the job, uh, you know, I've been, you know, talking to him even more now. Um, and we talk about almost every day, you know, and just catching up and talking about life. And, you know, we've been meeting a lot. And I think my, our, my relationship has really grown with him um, over this quarantine, just Zoom meetings, FaceTime calls, whatever it is, texting back and forth. So, 
you know, I think he's, you know, bound to have, you know, a great year uh, being the quarterback coach. Obviously, you know, he's got a great quarterback room and you know, obviously Justin's um, a beast, but um, he's a great quarterback coach and a great dude. So uh, he's, I couldn't think of a better candidate for the job. And I'm so happy that Coach Day kind of promoted him, I guess you could say, to, to quarterback coach. Awesome stuff. And last question here. You mentioned the quarterback room. If Justin has the year that everyone expects him to have, it won't be a surprise to see him go to the NFL. Uh, he's already being projected, you know, possibly it's either him or Trevor Lawrence, maybe first, first or second pick. But either way, he's going to be probably a pretty high draft pick if he has the year everyone thinks he will. And, um, you know, that will leave C.J. Stroud. It will leave Jack Miller. And then you're coming in. Uh, you know, obviously, I know you want to come in and compete from day one for that starting job. I guess the two things I want to ask you on that are, one, why do you feel, I guess, like, what are your strengths that you feel are going to put you in a position to potentially win that job as a true freshman? And what are the things you want to work on um, so that you can be in a position to win that job as a true right. freshman? Um, I think first and foremost, playing at a school like St. Joe's, you're on, um, you know, the kind of the national schedule and going up against, you know, the best competition that the nation has to offer, I think really is one of the biggest reasons, you know, why I chose St. Joe's in the first place, because I knew I was going to be tested um, as much as possible on the field, um, going up against great competition. It's kind of like a college program, you know, with the, the type of coaches that we have. And, um, you know, I think they're definitely getting me ready for the next level. So I think that's, you know, huge just um, in itself. I think that's going to translate uh, very well to the college game, just being on kind of the big stage in high school football. I mean, obviously college football is a little bit bigger, but, um, you know, playing a national schedule, I think, you know, kind of gets you ready for that. And then the one thing that I think I want to improve the most on is just the mental side of the game. You know, I'm trying to absorb knowledge in every single way I can. You know, I'm meeting with um, Coach Dennis and going over, you know, coverage recognition and stuff like that, just little stuff that I think make, you know, all the difference, you know, when it comes down to it. So, um, and the one thing is you can never, you know, know too much about football. So I'm just trying to soak everything up and, and you know, kind of gain as much knowledge as I can from, you know, him and um, my coaches at, at St. Joe's. So it, it's definitely been you know, a great start to, I think, the, the learning of the mental game at the next level and, you know, something that I'm definitely looking forward to continue. Awesome, Kyle. Well, thanks a ton. You're the first guest on our new series around the Oval where we're going to go and talk to, you know, recruits and coaches and, you know, just a number of different people one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And so we're, we're really happy to have you on. We hope you and your family continue to stay safe and um, that, you know, you continue to have the opportunity to work hard and, and hopefully get on the field sooner versus later for, for St. Yeah. Joe's this year. No doubt. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Appreciate it.